Hello, my dear students of grade 4. Welcome back to the second part of the lesson. Today, our topic of discussion is condensation and the water cycle. Condensation is a change in the state of water from a gas or vapor form into liquid form. It generally happens when vapor in water air encounters a cool surface. But condensation doesn't need a solid surface to take place, as it occurs when a warm pocket of water vapor encounters colder gases. Condensation is an everyday event. Some of the more common examples of condensation are morning dew, when moisture in the air condenses on the grasses cooled during the night. Droplets on your can of soda. The cold surface of the can causes moisture in the warm exterior air to condense on the outside of the can. A foggy windshield. The air in your car contains moisture and more is added from the breath and the bodies of the passengers. With enough moisture and cool enough windshield, the moisture condenses as droplets that fog your windows. A foggy mirror. The same thing happens in your bathroom when you shower. Moisture condenses on a cool mirror. A foggy breath. Can you see the breath? Then it's cold outside. Cold enough to condense moisture into larger droplets. This is an example of condensation occurring without a surface to collect the drops. Clouds. The clouds in the sky are another example of condensation without a surface. Life depends on water cycle which includes condensation, evaporation and precipitation. Without condensation, there would be no clouds, rain, snow or hail. Condensation is what happens when water vapor changes from a gaseous to a liquid state. Clouds formation are a large-scale example of condensation and generally form when water vapor in the air rises to meet cold air higher in the atmosphere. As the warm air cools and the molecules stick together, drops of water or ice crystal form and surround dust particles in the air. Clouds are billions of these water-coated dust particles swirling together. The water cycle. Clouds are a part of the water cycle that makes life on Earth possible. When clouds become saturated with water droplets or ice crystals and cannot hold them anymore, the excess water comes down as precipitation, that is, rain or snow. Going from warm to cold. When the outside of your car windshields fog up on a cold day, the same process is at work as when you pour iced tea into a glass on a hot day, the outside of the glass starts getting wet, or when you see your breath on a very cold day. Air conditioners and humidifiers come in handy on hot days. As a part of the water cycle, condensation plays an important role in sustaining life on Earth. Condensation occurs when certain conditions are met. 1. Rising air Water vapor suspending in rising air causes condensation. The sun rays pass through the atmosphere and causes ground temperature to rise. Air above the ground warms as heat radiates from the earth and starts to rise. 2. Cool surfaces Water-saturated air causes condensation as it comes into contact with a cooler surface. The excited water vapor bumps into cool surface and loses energy, changing states from a gas to a liquid. After condensation, the water vapor or the moisture in the atmosphere takes one of the following forms dew, frost, fog, and clouds. Condensation takes place when the dew point is lower than the freezing point as well as higher than the freezing point. The water cycle. Water cycle is also called the hydraulic cycle. 
the cycle that involves the continuous circulation of water in the Earth's atmosphere system. Of the many processes involved in the water cycle, the most important are evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation. Although the total amount of water within the cycle remains essentially constant, its distribution among the various processes is continually changing. Earth's water is always in constant movement and the natural cycle, also known as the hydraulic cycle, describes the continuous movement of the water on, above, and below the surface of the Earth. Water is always changing states between liquid, vapor, and ice, with these processes happening in the blink of an eye and over millions of years. The sun plays an important role in the water cycle. It acts as a driving force, as it is the object which melts the ice and liquid water to vapor. Water is always in a constant movement. This process is called water cycle. When the sun warms any water bodies, like lakes, ponds, oceans, rivers, it evaporates converting itself into water vapor or steam, and begins its journey in the air, flying in the atmosphere. This first journey is known as the evaporation. When the water converts into vapor, it rises towards the atmosphere, then cools down, transforming itself into clouds. This is the second stage known as condensation. The clouds always travel from one place to another. Clouds are tiny little drops of water suspended in the air. They grow and collect more water and when they cannot hold on anymore, they drop in the earth as a form of rain, snow or hailstorm. And this is the third stage known as precipitation. After the rain, snow or hailstorm falls down on the earth. It lands in the river or goes underground, which goes deep inside the earth and makes a long journey to reach the ocean. And when it arrives in the ocean, it will again begin the process of the water cycle, that is evaporation, condensation, precipitation. This is why it is known as a water cycle, because it is a never-ending continuous cycle. The water cycle is an extremely important process because it enables the availability of water for all living organisms and regulates weather pattern in our planet. If water didn't naturally recycle itself, we would run out of clean water, which is very essential to life. As the water cycle is also known as the hydrological cycle, it is important as it provides our earth with precipitation. If evaporation does not take place or it is disturbed, precipitation and other natural things will not take place and the water lost by evaporation from seas and rivers will not be replenished. With this, we come to the end of the class for the water cycle and condensation. I hope you have learned something new today. We will continue in the next class. Till then. Take care, stay safe, and stay healthy.